What's the best free EQ plugin? I'll give you my top five for 2020. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now EQs are one of the most important tools you'll use in the process of creating your masterpiece. And thankfully in 2020, there are heaps of free EQ plugins available to help us improve our sound. And in today's video, I'm gonna be running through my top five free EQ plugins for you to make the decision for yourself. I'll be finishing off with my absolute favorite, but in honesty, all of these are worth downloading and trying out because they all have different advantages. So please do stick around for all of that. But before we do get started, if you like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plugin reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about my future videos. Now let's get stuck into some EQing. Five. So in at number five, I have the Slick EQ from Tokyo Dawn. And those of you who have watched this channel before will know that I'm a bit of a fan of Tokyo Dawn stuff. I've got all of their free plugins and all of their commercial plugins as well. And what I really like about them is they always give you some kind of a surprise there, something really, really useful. And this is no exception. This has got a couple of surprises. But first of all, let's take a look at the basic operation. So it's a three band EQ. So we have controls for the low, mid and high bands here. Now there's no graphic display there of what's going on. There's no spectrum analyzer and you can't push nodes around like you can on some other EQs. This is much more like an old fashioned analog style EQ. Now, if you're put off by that, if you find that confusing to use, I encourage you to download something like this or even specifically this and give it a go because it's really gonna train you to use your ears rather than use your eyes all the time when you're doing EQing. Now the basic basic thing that you need to do is select a frequency, like I would select something like 100 here, and then you can either boost or reduce that particular frequency using the gain control. Now also for the low and the high uh, frequencies here, we've got a couple of different types of slope here. There's a shelf here, and then there's also a bell curve here. So they've got a different nature to them. And then you also have this high pass filter for the bottom end here. So you can cut out that low rumble. You just select a frequency and it will slope off and cut off things below that frequency. So those are your basic controls. So you would be, say, listening to some drums like this. And you might want to boost the high frequencies. Somewhere in the high frequencies, we'll have a listen to that. That's really pulling out those hi-hats. And let's give that kick drum a boost. Okay, so that's the basic operation, but what are the extras? Well, first of all, there are different modes to this EQ. You can see if I flick through now, we've got this American one here, we've got the British mode, we've got the German mode, and we've got the Soviet mode. And all that does is it changes the, the nature of those curves. There's lots in the documentation about this, which gives you a bit more detail, but essentially it changes a lot of the nature of the slope, how uh, steep those curves are, the nature of the curves. So that gives uh, uh, your EQing a different characteristic. The other extra thing that you get with this particular plugin is some saturation control. So you can switch um, EQ saturation on here. Now it's only gonna add saturation if you've boosted something. So if you've done nothing, it's not gonna add any character to the sound at all. But when you do start to boost frequencies, it'll start to add some saturation. And you've got some different types of saturation to choose from over here. Linear, silky, mellow, uh, deep and funky. Now, I'll warn you that it's very, very subtle. If, you know, don't be worried if you sort of listen to these different modes and you think, oh, I can't really hear any difference. You do have to listen very, very carefully. It is very, very subtle. So that's my number five pick, Slick EQ. Four. So in at number four, we have the Voxengo Marvel GEQ. And if you've heard the name Voxengo before, it's probably because you've seen me use their Span plugin, another awesome plugin. But today we're looking at their graphic equalizer and it's really straightforward to use for its basic use. We have these 20 bands of EQ here. And if you want to increase a certain frequency range, then of course you simply slide that slider up there to increase it and down to decrease it. You can also use your mouse wheel, which I think is a really 
really nice tactile way to do it and feels much more organic. And you can also go to the numbers at the bottom and then you can sort of drag up and down to increase or decrease from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some EQing on this drum kit. Let's have a listen. Take out some bottom end. Okay, so you can see the basic operation there. There's some handy little features. If we use this feature here and drag up and down, we can see we can actually just scale our changes there in the EQ. And we can also hit the inverse button to do this. Now you might be wondering why we want to do that. Well, that leads me nicely onto another feature they have here, which is the group feature. And I'll show you what I would use the group feature for. This had me a little confused at first because I couldn't see what difference it was making when I moved to a different group. And and that's because in order to make a change or hear the change for a different group, you have to set up the routing. So you go to the routing at the top. And what I'm going to do is for the first uh, sort of group here, I'm going to set it to group two for uh, this output here, C, which happens to be one of the outputs here, which is my left output. Then I'm going to set group three to output D, which is my right output. So now I can use this equalizer to equalize the left and the right channels differently, which is actually quite a handy feature, especially when you're working on widening the sound of a stereo uh, track. So let's go ahead, for example, I'm working on group two. I'll make the same kind of changes I made before. I'll play so you can, you'll be able to hear this will only be happening in one side. So I recommend using headphones or decent speakers. And as I did before, I'll just reduce some of the bass frequencies, or the low frequencies. Okay, so it starts to make it sound a bit wider. Now, one of the things I quite often like to do is to make it opposite in one side to the other. I do this when I'm widening guitars, for example, or sometimes when I'm thickening up vocals and I've recorded extra vocal tracks. So I'll go to the second group there, group three, which of course is affected by, uh, is affecting my right speaker. And as a fact, I'll go back to group two and I'll copy it over to three using this feature. So now we go to group three, it's the same, and I'm just gonna invert it there so that we get an opposite effect. I'll play that. Now in the real world, I probably wouldn't be using it on a full drum kit like this, but it is a feature that I would find quite useful. And if you like graphic EQs for manipulation, then I'd go ahead and download this one. Three. So in at number three, we have Blue Cat's Triple EQ. Now this plugin comes in three different flavors, one for mono sources, one for stereo sources, and this dual plugin here where we can adjust the left and the right channels separately, which we saw was quite handy earlier on. Now there's something unique about this particular plugin and that is the range of adjustment we can do. We're here in the 20 decibel mode at the moment, meaning we can actually reduce frequencies by up to 20 decibels or increase them by up to 20 decibels. That's already a massive range of 40 decibels. But if we go to this 40 decibel mode, then we have a massive 40 in reduction, 40 of increased decibels there, a massive range of 80 decibels. Now, before you were to go ahead and make changes, particularly say on the low end like this, I would make sure you have the auto gain feature switched on, which I will switch on now. That's gonna ensure that you don't wreck your your speakers or your eardrums. Um, there we can make those massive adjustments and you can see that it's adjusting the gain on that right channel as I make the change to the right channel there. So you can see there that as I adjust the low frequency there, it's uh, got a shelf type curve to it. The same for the top end, if we adjust that, it's got a shelf type type curve and in the middle it's got a bell type curve as you can see there. And we can adjust the cue of that with our mouse wheel. So I'll just go ahead and do that there. So all fairly straightforward, but as I say, you can make separate adjustments to the left and right channel. What I really like about this is a particular mode where you can link the channels and then make, so they're now linked, but instead of them doing the same thing, I'm gonna put it in mirrored mode. So if I make a change in the upward direction on one side, it's gonna make a downward change on the other side. I find that quite handy for making adjustments to stereo images where I wanna create a bit more width Again. So that is the triple EQ from Blue Cat Audio. Two.
So in at number two, we have the M equalizer from Melda Productions, and it's there at number two because it's so feature rich. But before we get stuck into the features, I just want to quickly explain that the version you're looking at on your screen right now is the paid version because that's what I have on my system. The only difference with the free version is they show a banner down at the bottom somewhere here. And as long as you can put up with that banner, you'll get all of the same features you do in the full paid version. That's nice of them, isn't it? So let's get stuck in into the main features of this. We have six nodes here to adjust different bands in the frequency ranges. So we can turn them on by double clicking on them like so. I'll just go through and turn all six on and then we can drag them, drag them around as you'd expect. We can adjust the cue with our mouse wheel like so or we can move these lines in and out. In addition to that, if we right click on a node, we get lots of options there for different types of curves and all that kind of thing. Now. If I've got one criticism of this plugin, it's the way they've kind of hidden this away there. I think they could have put in some of these options on the main interface, but it's free after all, so I won't complain too much and I'll close that off. Now, this is the first one that we've actually seen where it actually has an analyzer on it. So I'll switch that on and play my drums. And you can see the difference there with that analyzer, which the adjustment of that fourth node has made. So it's nice to get that visual cue. We also have a sonogram over here. I'll switch that on, switch the analyzer off. Not something I use much, but you may use it. I'll switch the analyzer back on. Um, some of the other features that we have are things like the areas feature. So if we switch that on and go to drums, we get this kind of a map there of where the different drums lie in the different frequency ranges. So that's kind of handy if you're just starting out. And one thing I really like is the auto listen feature. I'll switch that on. And then as you drag a node around and you're playing your music, it solos that node. Let's have a look at that. So that's really handy for being able to hear exactly what frequency ranges you are adjusting. And last, we have some saturation. So if we've made some adjustments with our, key, our EQ like so, we can go ahead and add in some saturation, see if you can hear the difference. So that's a number two pick. M Equalizer from Melda Productions. One. So in at number one is Nova from Tokyo Dawn. Again, I really do love their products. And I've chosen this one because it's got a particular feature which I really do like on this and we haven't seen that on the other plugins. We'll get to that in a moment, but let's look at the basics first off. It's got four bands here in the main that you can adjust. And as you'd expect, you can just drag them around like so, or you can change them down the bottom using the knobs like so to adjust the gain there, the Q, or the frequency. You can also adjust things like the Q um, with your mouse wheel like so, and you can also either change the type of curve using your right mouse button to cycle through them like so, or you can also do it down here as well. So there's a couple of different ways of kind of using that interface. As well as those four bands there, we also have a high pass filter and a low pass filter, which I'm switching on there. You can drag those around like so, and you can also also adjust things like the slope. So we'll make it really aggressive there like so. Um, really, really handy things to have as well. As well as that, we also have an analyzer. So if I switch the analyzer on and we play some music, let's have a look. I'll make some changes. There you go. So that's really handy if you like that kind of visual cue there as well. So what I really like about this particular plugin is the fact that it's a dynamic equalizer. Now, if you don't know what that is, it means that we've actually got a compressor on each of these nodes that we've got here. Now, it's a little bit like a multi-band compressor, but a little bit more detailed as well, I'd say, in some ways. I find this feature really, really handy. But first of all, let's take a look at how we use it. So if we take a node like this, we'll just pop it up there like so, um, and I'm just going to turn the threshold button on there, and that turns on the dynamic EQ for that node. So just like a compressor, we can start off by adjusting the threshold. Now I'm going to play the song, or the drums. 
You can see on some of those snare hits there, it starts to compress that frequency a little bit. Let's have a look again. Now, if I want to make it more aggressive, I'll increase the ratio there. And then I've got things like attack and release. So if I wanted to grab it and then release it quickly, then I'll lower that attack down there and I'll lower that release. So you can see, for example, is on those snare hits that it's, that, it's, that it's grabbing it and it's suppressing it. And what's really handy about that is that you can say, well, I want to accentuate that frequency there for the overall drum kit. But when that frequency gets out of control, like it does with those snare hits, I want to suppress it so that it doesn't sound too harsh. And that's a really sort of good use of multi-brand compressors. I really like to use it, for example, on an acoustic guitar when, say, I want some of the high frequencies, those sort of glistening features to be there but um, you know somebody might be slapping the strings in between strums or things like that and that can get a little bit harsh so you can use a dynamic EQ to sort of grab certain frequencies and then compress them when they get out of control a really really handy feature really nice looking plug-in really simple and straightforward to use and free can you believe it I love it so did you find that useful? If you did, you can let me know by hitting the like button. If you didn't find it useful and you don't like getting cool stuff for free, hit the dislike button twice. If you've got any questions whatsoever, ask in the comments down below. Also, let me know which is your favorite of these five. And if you've got any EQs which are not on this list, which you really like to use, let us all know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this kind of content and do make sure you ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my future videos and I'll see you in the next video.